get that on there. Morning, everybody. Outdoors Dan here. We're uh, going to get ready to tape Hunting for X's with Nathan Brooks and Mr. Darren Christianberry. I've got I've got everything turned up as far as I can on uh, the headphones, so hopefully you'll be able to hear Darren and Nathan talk on this, but I had a few people ask me, if would you please live stream that when you talk to them next, and I told them I would, so just keep them, I promise, for old Fred, so there you go, Fred, so uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna get this started, da Nathan, Darren, say hi. Hello, hello, hey. There you go, you said hi, we got, got people watching it. All right, let's see if I can get this all set up, and we'll start taping. <clears throat> Sounds like I'm losing my voice already. Boy, last night's show, was, it went a little long last night, and I had to do a little more talking than I usually do for two hours, so. <laughs> Fun stuff, man. Fun stuff. All right. So, that should be that. Okay, I got that. You guys ready? Yes, sir. All right, we're ready. Hi, everybody. Good to see you out there. Well, thanks for watching us on the stream. Nathan Brooks and Mr. Darren Christianberry on the show. Every Monday, hunting for X's, the little target X's, not bad relationship X's. Little target. We're always talking archery. All right, let's get this thing started. Welcome to this week's edition of Hunting for X's with Mr. Nathan Brooks and Mr. Darren Christianberry. Uh, Hunting for X's is brought to you by the fine folks at Elite, Scott Archery, Custom Bow Equipment, and Winner's Choice String. What's going on, fellas? Typical Monday grind. Typical Monday grind, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to tell you, it's hotter in Hades uh, here in Iowa. It's uh, it's just been miserable. And I talked to my buddy Donovan down in Kansas, and he said it's been bad. Now, Darren, you were in Pennsylvania at uh, the IBO shoot there. Uh, what was the weather like for the shoot this weekend? Uh, well, we got there. We got there Thursday afternoon, and it was hot. Um, front came through big storm blew through thursday night and then it was really nice friday uh but then it was in the mid 40s uh saturday morning and yesterday morning so you know highs in the upper 60s low 70s no humidity but actually got down in the 40s there in franklin pa so it was actually uh, i'm glad i watched the weather forecast because as hot as it's been here at the house i would have just packed shorts and bathing suits and i looked at the forecast and they were calling for some forty or so I threw some pants and a hoodie in there, and I'm glad I did because I needed them both mornings. Wow. You know, I got to tell you, Larry and I went down to Pennsylvania, uh, what was that? In, uh, I think it was in March, if I remember right. It was right before turkey season. We were at a, an event called the Chico Outdoor Show. And uh, I, I got to tell you, it was delightful out there. I, I, I had no idea it was that beautiful on what, in what we were in western Pennsylvania, right by the Ohio line. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, just beautiful country out there. And then uh, we went back the, a different way. We took 80 all the way out east uh, from Iowa. Larry met me up here at my house, and then we shot. I just drove from, uh, from Iowa to Pennsylvania back. But uh, I had no idea the toll roads were that expensive uh, going through there. And I, I just said, you know what? We're going to shoot down West Virginia and come back on 70. And, man, when, I, when you drop down in those mountains in West Virginia and stuff, that, that is just absolutely gorgeous. I love that part of the country. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's a good drive there across 70. Seems like I have to take 70. I go up and hit 70 in Indianapolis, take it through Columbus, Ohio, and then over through Wheeling, West Virginia. Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops right here. I try to always make time to stop and snoop around in there. Uh, and I did this trip, too. They have Whitetail World in there, big uh, museum of world-class whitetails from all over the country and their stories and their scores. And I've been in that place two or three times, and every time I go in there, it's uh, it's pretty scenic. Yeah, yeah. You cut out on me a little bit there, Darren. But I, I got it's always pretty scenic. Is that what you said? Yeah, I said it's a it's a it's a scenic route on that highway there. It's really nice drive on I seventy. Okay. Hey, for everybody watching us on Facebook Live, if you got a question for Darren Christianberry or Nathan Brooks, archery related or bow hunting, 
just uh, go ahead and hit me up on the message board and I will ask Darren and Nathan to answer that for you while we got them on. They're two of the most respected shots, professional archers in the country. Well, Darren is. I don't know about Nathan anymore. But, but uh, <laughs> very true. I'm just kidding you, Nathan. Uh, if you want to ask a question, we'll be more than happy to get it up there to the guys. So, Nathan, you just hung around the house and celebrated Father's Day like most of us. And uh, I actually had to do two shows yesterday. I had to work, but uh, got a chance to see the kids. And, uh, you know, it's always nice when you can see the kids, right? Uh, yeah. I, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, we uh, we had a big uh, cookout um, here yesterday at, at my house. And then uh, in-laws came over and uh, we had a good meal and then on saturday actually i went to my mom and dad they live about an hour or so away and went and had a good time over there with them on saturday and ate out saturday night so i've just been eating all weekend basically ain't been doing anything uh productive but uh but friday thursday you know doing a normal normal sales grind for yeah. june yeah i got you Hey, Darren, I got to ask, what was the attendance like at the shoot? I mean, the IBOs are, you know, that's a big deal out there. Was there still a lot of a lot of people out there shooting arrows? Actually, there was. I think um, I, was, I, I roomed with Jacob Marlowe and Tommy Gomez over the weekend, and I took Jacob back to the airport on my way home last night, and we were talking just about general information over the weekend, and he said that Brian Markham, which Brian's the president of the IBO, Brian told him there were 800 and 73 red i think it was 873 registered shooters this weekend so you know heading northeast and even with gas prices and hotels as high as they are that's still getting really a thousand shooters for an ibo and that seems to be a pretty steady number for them right now so uh, a lot of people still showing up it was good yeah that that's good attendance that's for sure well you know as we're uh, this is what june uh, june 20th i think uh we're getting yep. closer to the the fall and it can't get here fast enough for me, but um, you, uh, we've got a few select shoots coming up. Actually, my buddy Mark Wagner, um, I, Nathan, I think you know Mark. He owns Archery Field and Sports in Altoona, Iowa. He's actually going to have a big invitational shoot this fall where they're going to be doing their... You remember the old ESPN games, uh, that yep. the, how archery was a big part of that? Mark's going to bring that. Mark actually won a bronze medal. Uh, on national TV and the ESPN games. I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, he's a, he's, he, I love the kid. He, he's not a kid. He's in probably his late thirties now, you know, but uh, I, I grew up, you know, I watched him grow up and he's one of the best uh, shots in the country. I mean, he's just a pure shooter and yeah, you guys, I'm sure see him out in Vegas a lot. He goes to Vegas and shoots out there quite a bit. And, but uh, uh, he's going to bring those speed disc competitions back. And I'm anxious to see how that's going to rock. Yeah, that's an interesting format. I like it because it's instant gratification for the viewer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, pull your binoculars up and see, well, where'd they hit? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. It, when it hits, it either busts or it doesn't. You oh. know? So, um, so, so that's that's good in the in the viewership sort of thing. It, it's a fast paced. Um, it's a fast-paced shooting sport, so it is a little different than what, well, it's a whole lot different than what, you know, Darren and I have historically done. I mean, just to be perfectly honest, when I was younger, I had target panic so bad, I actually went to a, a pop-up 3D event, and after that weekend, I felt like I had, uh, I don't know, backed up another three or four years worth of trying to defeat old habits mm -hmm. <laughs> because they came back from that fast paced shooting stuff and uh, it, it took a little bit to get over it and I, I actually have strayed away from that kind of stuff just because of my issues that I've had um, you know with panic but that being said I, I love that stuff it's so fun because it's fast paced and it's just uh, I, I really like it yeah I morning David good to see you this morning David's watching us uh, this morning uh, I actually love that kind of stuff. Uh, you guys remember the Muzzy Be Quick Challenge? You remember that uh, 10 or 15, uh, it was probably 15, 17 years ago. You remember that? Yeah. They had that traveling uh, that traveling deal, and I actually won that in Iowa up at the uh, up at Pine Lake. I, I actually beat Mark, if I remember right. But 
and I'm not bragging. It's just, you know, I, I think that's probably the only thing I'll ever top him in. So I gotta, I gotta get that little dig in there once in a while. But, uh, you know, you got, you had, uh, the basic, the premise for the shoot was you had five arrows and you had to shoot five targets. You, you, you slap the timer, you, you knock an arrow, slap the timer, shoot, uh, shoot all of your five targets and then slap the timer down again. And man, I tell you what, that, that stuff's intense, but I love that kind of stuff. That and my, my favorite thing about going to, uh, you know, regular 3d shoots is I love the novelty shoots. I, I don't know why, I guess I'm just goofy that way, but you know, you put an elk target out there or, or a mule deer target out there at 115 yards and put a, 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 a golf tee in the middle of that 10 ring. I'll, I'll spend $25 there easy just trying to hit that thing. <laughs> it's, you know, I don't know why I, I gravitate to that stuff, but I, I just love it. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I, I still remember, uh, I, I got some bad news uh, last night when I was doing the show in St. Louis. Uh, a friend of mine passed away that was very instrumental in, in helping me when I first started bow hunting and shooting a bow. And um, uh, Bobby Pickle was his name. Bob, we're going to miss you, buddy. But uh, I just, uh, I, I just, when I first started, it was shooting paper targets uh, on a 3D league. It, they called it a 3D league, but it was a 20-yard range, and they had all these paper targets on bales of different animals, and then they'd put shrubs, you know, fake Christmas trees. They put anything and everything they could where you actually had to thread the needle. And I'm glad I started out that way because I really think that really helped me be a better shot doing that than just trying to shoot an exit 20 yards on the wall. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. I know, I know, I know it definitely helped my hunting. That's for sure. But, you know, when you're shooting an exit 20 yards, the last thing you're thinking about is an obstruction in the way. Um, so, uh, you know, when you, when you're hunting, a lot of times you do have to thread the needle. You do have to shoot around, uh, not around, but you have to figure out a way around bushes and limbs and trees and you know anything in your way so so yeah that's a it, it, it's a different mindset for sure uh, mm. because you have to tune that stuff out in your mind in order to make that shot and then also you've got balance issues that you have to deal with where if you're standing up there on the line shooting a 20 yard paper target um you're you know you you just get your feet set and you shoot the shot. You don't really worry about where you're actually set in relationship to the alignment of being able to get an arrow through there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're hunting, uh, those are real, real situations. Um, you know, I've numerous times I've had to change my position either in my stand or, you know, you know, if you're doing spot stock, or whatever you have to just make it happen. So you got to go to the right spot. So yeah, it's, a, it's, it's definitely legit. Absolutely. You guys know Parker Miller, don't you? You know who Parker is? Parker is one of the elite ambassadors. Uh, he's a good rep for elite. He's out there talking about the brand quite a bit. So Parker's watching us right now. Hey, Tony. Tony's one of my regulars on the Saturday show in Iowa. Uh, Tony Sowers. Thanks, Tony, for watching. Appreciate you. I, I don't know. How, I, I don't know how many times I had to sit on my rear end or sit, uh, bend, get down on a bend and knee to take a shot at some of those things. But I, I mean, how many times have you been out in the woods and you've actually had to, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't cut every shooting lane in the world that you want to. There's going to be, I don't know why it always happens, but eventually it does. I, you know, a deer is going to step out there and his vitals are covered up and because there's always that one branch or that one piece of uh, cedar tree or whatever that gets in the way. So, I mean, that kind of stuff really helps you when you get out there and experience it for real. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. I mean, yeah. You've got to be able, you got to be able to work around that sort of stuff. And, um, like you said, that's, that's real world hunting situations. Yeah. If you've been in the elk woods, um, I have, uh, you're going to, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about because elk never show up where they're supposed to. Um, and, and, and I have no idea what's going to happen to me when I go on this moose hunt in Alberta, uh, in, in late September. I, I, you know, it's so thick up there. I bear hunted up there several times. And I mean, you get off the trail up there, you go five, 10 yards. I mean, you can get totally lost. That's how thick it is. It's crazy. So I have no idea what I'm going to be in for when I go moose hunting here this fall. That's going to be it. That's going to be something else. Can you hit a grizzly bear with a bow? You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I was just, I talked. You, you better practice. 
I, I talked to uh, I talked to my outfitter, my buddy uh, up there. His name's Ken, and I said, Ken, uh, now I got to ask this: where we're going, there's there are grizzly, right? And he goes, Yeah, there's grizzly, Dan. And I said, Okay, that's what I thought. And I said, I'm gonna bring some bear spray with me. And he goes, Well, you can't bring it in across. You know, we're driving up there, so he goes, You can't bring it across. They won't let you. I said, What? He goes, yeah, they won't let you bring the bear spray. I said, well, I'll get some and I'll ship it up to you because I'm going to make sure I have some bear spray on me on a molly somewhere where I can get a hold of that pretty quick. But, you know, I've been around bears a lot and, you know, black bears don't bother me a bit. I've never really been around a grizzly in a grizzly situation that I know of. But uh, I, I know that uh, there's a really weird thing going on around uh, hunting right now. A lot of these bears, like in up in Alaska, um, uh, up in um, up in uh, the north, uh, the Pacific Northwest, and a lot of these folks are going out there rifle hunting uh, for you know uh, either elk or mule deer or whatever. And a lot of a lot of these bears have figured out when they hear that rifle report, when they hear that shot, they know the dinner bells ring. Uh, they just we just lost a, a hunter. Uh, I think it was last year he was uh, field dressing an elk. He shot it and a grizzly came in and, and mauled him to death. So, you know, that's something, you know, we laugh about that, but that's something you really need to pay attention to because. That, that, that's a very common thing, actually, in Wyoming. Yeah. Um, up there around that, you know, Yellowstone and the, the Tetons, um, all those outfitters talk about that. When they when they hear that rifle kaboom, mm -hmm. uh, you, better be, you better be taking care of it quick because. Or if you do come back, you leave it, you come back, you be on high alert because you can just almost bet they've already found it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, a bear has a better nose than a white-tailed deer. I don't know if a lot of folks realize that or not, but they really do. Their sense of sight is not as good, but they really rely on that sense of smell. So, yeah, I, I, trust me, my, uh, my back end kind of puckered up a little bit when he told me. <laughs> it's just like... Man, I, you know, what are you going to do? You got a thousand pound grizzly bear and I don't want to shoot anything I'm not going to eat. Uh, and I, I talked about this on the radio last night. I said, if I got a grizzly out there popping his jaws at me and stuff, I, you know, I, I'm not going to shoot because, but you know, what are you going to do if they start, if they start bluff charging you or something? I mean, I, I'm sure Ken's going to have a firearm, uh, a firearm with him because he's, you know, he's native up to Alberta. So he's a, he's a, city, a resident of Alberta. So I'm sure he's going to have a sidearm or something with him. But I, I just, uh, you shoot a bear and you don't have a tag, you better be prepared for staying up there extra time and because they're going to be, you're going to get rolled over the coals. And, you know, you're going to be, I, I don't want to, I hate to say it this way, but you're guilty before you're innocent, before, you know, in those kind of situations. You have to prove that you had to do what you, you know, you had to do. And I do really don't want to be in that situation. I understand that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Especially, you know, if you're out of the country, I mean, you you know, that stuff happens to you. You could lose your truck. You could lose your all your, you know, your gear. And, you know, who can afford that, you know? Well, that's why I would say my name is Darren Christenberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is precisely why I don't hunt anywhere that I'm not top of the food chain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's crazy. Uh, so speaking of top of the food chain, yeah. Uh, did he? I did. Did, did you? Did you? Po got second place this weekend. Woo! Uh, Took the podium. Uh, that How about that? Did, and he sh and that's shooting left handed. He uh, for everybody that's listening to this, Darren's a normally a right handed shot, but uh, he uh, he's he's breaking down, getting old, and everything. So he had to move over to his left hand. And uh, I don't know how you did it, Darren, to be honest with you, but you got second place shooting left-handed. That's awesome, buddy. Give me a little round of applause, man. Woo! Woo! It was a good weekend. Yeah, that was a good weekend. What, what was your score? Uh, I shot three up for the weekend, 403 on, on really tough ranges. And um, Tim Gillingham went into the shoot-off with a one-point lead. He was a, and a, uh, This is just how I can best explain how tough it was. Tim was at a 404 in first. I was at a 403 in second. Tony Taza was at a 401 in third. Jeff Hopkins was at a 397 in fourth. And then fifth place score, the cut score to make the top five, was Lauren Lohr with a 381. Wow. So, yeah, it's uh, 19. I had a 22-point lead over fifth place, and I was in second. So 
I didn't fear falling any worse than fourth place in the shoot off and I, I shot the shoot off pretty well and uh, a couple guys made bigger mistakes than I did in there and I came out in second just like I went in and that's I couldn't be happier I mean I could go back and find a point here or there Tim shot amazing in the shoot off you just I don't know that you would have beaten him uh, but for the overall weekend and the experience I am ecstatic with how things went and how I judged how I shot my bow um, I have 366 days to the day yesterday, one year and one day that I switched to left-handed. And uh, I've been working hard, and I think people are finally starting to see I I, I didn't just not try. I went all in and said, I'm going to begin, and it's really coming together. Yeah, well, you should be proud of that. Tim Gillingham's a good shot. I mean, he's been around for a long time, and he's won a lot of tournaments. So congratulations, Darren. That's awesome. Thank you. You know, Tim is uh, – Tim's the by far the top man in, in, the, in the senior class right now, and, and most of the time, uh, Tim is shooting scores that would be podium on, uh, and sometimes even leading the the men's pro class. You know, not just not just the senior pro class. So, you know, you gotta you gotta understand really just how good Tim actually is, and put that in perspective that. For 38 targets, a left-handed Darren Christianberry was beaten. Yeah, <laughs> isn't, that cra- isn't that crazy? Yes, yeah. and that's a uh, dude. I, when when Darren called me and said he got second place, I felt like I had just made the podium. Uh, it, 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 I mean, I, I can't tell you how how happy I am for Darren because I mean, this is a guy a year ago. I mean, to this day, a year ago, he was. Uh, I, I'm about ready. I'm going to quit. I'm <laughs> yeah. ready to give up. Yeah. Ready that's, to quit, and and that's know? the truth. That's the yeah. truth. I was I was done. You know, and it's like I, I just you hate to see somebody number one like Darren who has been in archery. Well, as long as I, the only way I know Darren is just through archery, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, so the majority of my life I've watched Darren shoot. I've watched him at the height of his professional career in 2006 and seven and five and you know all, all that time there where he was just shooting extremely good and you know a, a competitor. It didn't matter what archery venue he went to, he was you knew he was there all all the time. And uh, most of the time, he's the guy you're trying to beat. And so. You know, I've witnessed that, and then to see the struggles that come in with just the physical issues of, of dealing with, um, you know, the tremors and whatever it was that uh, was giving him the issues, and I, I, I'm experiencing a little bit of that, maybe the beginning stages of that myself. I even told Jennifer, my, my wife, last last winter, I said, maybe I even need to start you know, trying this left-handed stuff a little bit because I could see it happening to me eventually, too. I don't know if it's nerves. I don't know exactly what it is that gets shot that causes that. Whatever it is, uh, it's it's something that's really difficult as an archer to overcome because if you can't hold the bow still, you, you can't execute. Yeah. Um, it's just extremely difficult. And it's not like it's not like you're just moving a little bit. It's a lot. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a it's a lot of movement in the to the point where your arrow is almost bouncing on your arrow wrist if you're shooting like a long blade or whatever. Um, and so to see Darren in less than a year's time, are you, all right, Darren, you may not listen for a little bit because <laughs> I'm going to really blow you up here. Um, brag on you. So Darren has always been, for me, one of those guys that, you know, during the 2000 era of shooting, I wanted to be around because he was so positive. He, he never talked about his bad shots. Those things just didn't come to mind. It was always, oh, yeah, I just smoked that one, you know. And if he didn't make a great shot on the next one, ah, who cares? I smoked that other one, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, so, and that's the guy you want to be around because you don't need to drag up all those bad shots because the 95% of the people out there, that's what they want to talk about. They won't tell you at all. They come off the course, and they won't tell you about their good ones. They'll say, well, I shot a five on that other one over there, and that kept me from doing whatever. Well, 
what about the other 39 targets? You know? Um, so, so that's the, the attitude that I wanted to be around. And, you know, Darren, through his struggles, I saw that go away. I saw that, um, you know, that great positive attitude go away that I always admired so much. And I thought, you know, he's got that in there. He just needs to have some hope for his future and shooting. And really, that was it. It was left hand or nothing. And, um, you know, when he finally committed to going that direction, started seeing the progress. Old Darren, here he, here's where he appears. <laughs> you know, the old positive Darren that, you know, you don't ever hear anything bad about. And I'm not saying that stuff's not there, but as a shooter, it's not doing you any good whatsoever at all to focus on anything negative. Oh, listen, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, I mean, I, I make a bad shot in the field. I mean, it, it haunts me. I mean, it's just like, you know, I go through all my shot cycle and, you know, like it's just like that Kansas buck last year, you know, and, you know, I, I don't really talk about me smoking that mule deer at 58 yards. I, I, you know, I don't bring that up a lot, you know, but I do talk about the one I messed up in Kansas. And uh, so I totally understand what you're saying there. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's what, what do they call that? Uh, Regret? <laughs> <laughs> Empty freezer. <laughs> when what is the? Oh my gosh! I can't believe I can't think of the word. What's on my mind is when somebody gets sick and they carry it to somebody else. What do you call that? Oh my gosh! You mean they're they're spreading contagious? Contag they're contagious. Yeah. It's so <laughs> yeah. That attitude is contagious. And yeah. So if you're around people that talking about those bad shots well guess what that's going to do that's going to make you think about making bad shots more than it is making good shots yeah yeah i always i always i agree with you i always tell everybody try to learn from what happened and then move forward you know but you know it's 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 hard to do sometimes it really is well i mean there's no doubt that stuff can haunt you yeah. but you know, what's going to haunt you even more is when you screw it up the next time well yeah you didn't you don't want that. You don't want that going through your draw cycle in your head. You know, you want to be focusing what's what's ahead of you. You know, you know that I know that twenty twenty two yards, eighteen yards. You know, that's that. You know, want to, I want that shoulder to open up. You know, or if you're hunting a three D, and so Darren, I hey, I gotta ask you because I can't believe we're twenty five minutes into this already. Um, when when you were out there in Pennsylvania, I mean, was it one foot touching the stake? Or, I mean, or did you have to get down on a knee? I mean, how much did you have to articulate your shots? You don't do any of this sitting down or on the knee. It's it's one foot touching the stake or straddle the stake or right. I mean, you if someone were to protest you for not touching the stake, I mean, you get a warning. So, but no one's no one's cheating or trying to get an advantage there you just you find the best footing in a general area around the stake and uh and it's not perfect footing you've got rocks and roots yeah. and little hills and bumps it's just it's not perfect footing uh you do the best you can but yeah there's the target is usually open or at least the kill zone is they may hide the head or the butt so you have an open an open target to the the vitals um it's not like shooting a brush shoot or anything like that this is this is a, a scoring tournament where you have a legitimate chance to hit the rings, and unless you make a big mistake, but yeah, uh, yeah it's a it, it's a it's a legit three D tournament. I just didn't know how with being out there in Pennsylvania with the terrain, the topography, the way that is. I mean, I I mean they've got some hills down there. I just I just wondered how that was how that stacked up for you. Yeah, now we shot some terrain the first day. We shot like down a uh, a roadway in a ravine so the first few targets were kind of like up a hill shooting up the ravine uh -huh. and then as you went farther down the road you kind of got some flat side hill stuff and then when you got to the bottom of caribou across a big creek bottom i mean there was no ground at all to judge it was just air across this big creek bottom and then you came back up the other side well then yesterday when we shot we shot on this big ridge top it was perfectly flat on top we just did a big circle around this ridge top Hardly any terrain at all to deal with the second day. So you just get to see a little bit of everything on an ideal course. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, like I said, we're in June tw uh, June 20th already, folks. Now it's the time to get out there. You need to start You need to start practicing your shots, getting out, get, you know, building that muscle memory up in your form. Uh, you know, try to shoot at least 10 or 15 arrows a day if you get a chance to do that. And if you do, I promise you that's going to pay dividends in September and October and November. So... 
just uh, get out there and keep it, you know, keep it happening. And, uh, you know, we all like to send it, right? So get out there and send a few every day. Right, Nathan? Well, yeah. <laughs> I thought I lost you there. All right. <laughs> Hey, uh, anything, uh, anything we need to talk about real quick before we uh, get out of here? Any, uh, any homework or anything? No, I just want to add something there to close on what we just discussed about for people. If, if you're doing something and you're shooting those 10 or 15 arrows a day um, and things aren't working, mm-hmm. change something. You know, I, I mean, I'm living proof of that. Things were not working for me. I, I, like Nathan said, I at one time competed at the highest level. I know what I'm capable of and to have that stripped away and physically and mentally to not be able to do it. That was completely taken away from me. And I needed that purpose back in my life because that's who I am. So I did the most drastic thing ever. I started coaching myself to do it. So if you're out there shooting these 10 or 15 arrows and things aren't going good, you can't hold a pin still change something or seek help. There is a million ways to get information on how to shoot good shots on how to set your draw length on working on your equipment and if things aren't working well for you change it fix it seek some help and just do and it doesn't take a lot of help you just need a little bit of time a little bit of effort a little bit of dedication and you can get some pretty dramatic results if you're not careful Uh, absolutely and you know you can always reach out to darren or nathan too if you got questions and darren if someone does have a question for you how can they get a hold of you uh, Facebook and Instagram. I'm just Darren Christenberry on both of those. And if, uh, if they want to do a little more professional, a little more detailed, or want to send me a shooting resume at the proper time, they can email me at dchristenberry at toglc.com. There you go. Nathan, how about you, buddy? Uh, pretty much the same thing. Nathan Brooks Archery, Facebook, Instagram. And then uh, if they want to email me, nbrooks at toglc. There you go. Two guys, two good fellows right there, and they have a wealth of uh, archery knowledge. So if you need any help, they'll be glad to help you. And I'm always around. You can find me at theoutdoorcallradio.com. My email's right there, and I'll be always happy to help you and uh, see what's going on. Hey, Rick Johnson, good to see you. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of Hunting for X's with Mr. Nathan Brooks and Darren Christianberry. Hunting for X's, the podcast, is brought to you by the fine folks at Elite. Scott Archery, custom bow equipment, and winner's choice strings. We'll see you next time on the line right here on Hunting for X's. All right, guys, we're clear, man. Thank you. Boom. Boom. That was a good podcast. So uh, I'll get a hold of you next week, and if you guys got any conflicts or whatever, let me know, will you? Sounds good. All yeah. right. You guys have a good Monday. Thank you for everything. All right. See you, Dan. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Nate. Bye, Nate. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he always got Oh. Hey, good morning, everybody. Oh, let me turn my mic back on. Good morning. Good to see you. How everybody's doing? Uh, that was fun having Nathan and Christian, Dar- Chris, Darren Christian Barry on. And I got to tell you, that, that's what we do on the Outdoor Club Radio. We got some of the top talent in the country, outdoor professionals, anglers hunters uh professional archers and that's what we do every week this it's great content we always like to have fun with it and if you if you ever have any questions or comments or if i'm not doing something that you want to hear please reach out and let me know mountain man's on here right now good morning mountain man good morning rick um you know uh uh, rob and matt do a show called the keystone experience that's we got, we got Trevor and um, Matt and uh, Rob out on the East Coast. I mean, those guys hunt a little bit different than we do in the Midwest. I've got a brand new show from Texas coming on in a few weeks. Looking forward to, to hearing all about that. It's called Fall Obsession. And uh, we're going to keep growing this network. And it's a community. We want to be, we want to hear from you. We want to see your pictures. We want to hear your stories. If you got questions, uh, nobody's trying to sell you anything. I mean, we have sponsors and partners, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to try and sell you something every time you listen. So just, you know, it's a community and we want you to help grow it. So if you got friends out there that like to hunt or fish, like outdoor cooking, uh, please tell them about the Outdoor Call radio app. Ask them to go to their iTunes app store or their Google Play store and download it. And, you know, be part of it. You know, the more you put into it, you know, send questions. We'll talk about your questions on the air, 
and uh, we want, hey, good morning, Hank. Uh, we want to know what you're up to, because this is, I'm doing this, you know, to keep the radio shows going for another 10 or 15 years, and it's all for you. I mean, this is your network, so the Outdoor Call Radio, answer the call, and uh, I promise you, we'll, we'll make sure that we answer your questions as well. All right, I'm going to get going. i got another podcast to do here, and uh, you guys have a great Monday. Thanks for watching this this morning. I appreciate that. I'll try to do more of this stuff from time to time. Uh, so David, Parker, Tony, Rick, Rob, Hank, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon, and have a wonderful week, and be careful in that heat out there. See you, everybody.